All right guys, so today we're changing the chain with the 520 VX3 and a super light uh, rear sprocket 47 teeth. Uh, I'm not gonna go into details right now why we're doing the seven, the seven, uh, the 47 teeth. Uh, I'm gonna do that at the end of the video. I'm just gonna jump right ahead at the installation and in the end I'm gonna talk details why a 47 in the rear why I did not, uh, I'm not changing the front sprocket and I also recorded um, uh, top speed of each gear um, first through six and I will record another video once I change the rear sprocket with top uh, speed of each gear and then include that in the end of the video. So let's jump with the installation and let's see what we're gonna get. Alright, we're gonna start with the rear wheel nut. This is a 26 millimeter uh, to remove this. One tip I'm gonna give you about removing this is before you do anything, before you cut the chain, before you do anything, always come and make sure that you can actually remove it and you can actually put leverage in it. It gets down because past experience that I had one day, <clears throat> this could not be removed and I actually had to use a, an impact wrench to remove it. I don't know why it was torqued from the factory too much or a dealer torqued it too much, I'm not really sure. And if you don't have an impact wrench, then there's no way you're gonna remove it with a uh, breaker bar. So always check that you can actually remove it before you start doing anything else. The next thing is we're going to remove the plastic cover from the front sprocket. We're not removing the front sprocket, but I'm still gonna remove it uh, because I wanna clean it inside. It hasn't been removed since I bought the bike. And to do that, we're also gonna have to remove the, the shifter. And to do that, you're gonna have to mark it with a, a pen here, make sure it has a line so you can uh, put it back to the exact same place. So yeah, let's start with the rear wheel. guys to save a little time for the video. That was it. This is just to save time. Okay, we're out with this. Put, put it back in place for now since I know it can be removed and we're gonna remove remove the, the swing arm cover and then go and uh, cut down the chain okay to remove the swing arm cover we will need a T25 Torx have one two three screws Four, from what I see here, we're gonna check about this. Let's start with this. Now. Uh, <laughs> red Loctite, even here. Aprilia loves red Loctite. Okay. Alright guys, so one thing I like to do is always, when I remove screws, I like to check them to make sure that they're same length uh, whenever I remove something for the first time. So I always check them, these look the same length, so we can go on with the third one here. Okay, so this is exactly what I was talking about. I just removed this screw from here, and this is shorter. So these are things that you have to check before you start inserting screws. Make sure you don't put the long one here and the short one here. So short one goes on the top. So we have one, two, three long. The fourth one is short. And swing arm should be coming off. No. Actually, it looks like I have to remove this top two, which 
is also a T25. Maybe since we were at it at some point, I'm gonna remove it just to clean things. But for now, we're gonna put it back in place. All right, next step, we're going to remove one uh, chain link. Um, we actually, normally, what you do is you get this chain tool. We got this from uh, Motion Pro and you remove this uh, rivet and it comes up from the back but we're not going to use this the reason i don't want to use this is because they're very sensitive they break easy and i don't want to risk breaking it for such a strong uh, factory uh, chain link over here so instead we're just going to go with an angle grinder grind one of this and then use the chain tool to remove it so let's go Our rivet here, so we're gonna push it with our chain tool. Let's see that. And once the once you grind the link, bring this all the way to the front over here, so we can position. This tool is actually very easy to use. It even comes with instructions, the whole thing. So I'm not gonna go over how to use this. It's really simple. So um, let's start with removing this link. I'm going to install this on the side to create a little leverage. I'm gonna need this. So we'll set up the brake link right now under the B. Okay. So this goes behind. So if you feel too much resistance, Back it off a little bit and make sure you actually align with the rivet because if you feel too much resistance it means you're not aligned. So I did, so I'm gonna recheck this. not planning on removing the front uh, plastic cover or the front sprocket or anything and you just want to save time what you can actually do is you can get a new chain bring the, mat the last link over here grab it in and as you pull the chain in it's gonna grab the new chain and that way you don't really have to finagle it underneath here to put the new chain we're going to remove it though so I'm not going to be do doing that so it's all good I'm actually thinking about keeping this chain and running some tests with it with cleaning agents. I want to see um, how the O-rings will react in different chemicals and see what's actually the best uh, cleaning agent that I can use. Okay, now we already loosened this and so now we can actually remove it since we removed the chain. So we can remove the real wheel.
Okay, so normally there's an actual like a special tool that you can use here. Like it's like a lift to hold the tire in place. Where when you remove the axle, it's not just gonna drop. So I don't have that. I'm just using some rubber stoppers that I use for my car uh, just to hold the wheel in place while I remove the axle. The ABS sensor that's under here. So let's start with removing this slowly as it drops. And then what's out for the rim here, so you don't hit the, the brake. There we go. Done. All right. Let's remove this pocket. Okay, so this is a good opportunity to clean everything because you're never gonna have this space again. I use Simple Green. I love this thing. It's like it actually takes off all the grease. Really, really good. I actually use this to clean my chain too. So. Yeah, take this opportunity to clean everything. Okay, just in case someone comments that, oh, you use the non-input graded um, socket to remove the actual line. Okay, I have uh, input graded sockets. I'm gonna use them now. Sometimes it's just too lazy to switch them. So we remove this with um, 14, 14 millimeters. So I want to, yep, the 14, 14 millimeters. to be reusing this for sure. No need to use this. Uh, all right, let's put it inside and bring the new uh, sprocket. All right, let's install the sprocket. Super light, 47, 47 teeth. Let's see, let's make sure it fits. Perfect. Okay, so we're not gonna install the stock uh, nuts. I actually got these from uh, ProBolt. They're titanium and they're also pre-drilled because I'm actually going to uh, safety wire everything. So I'm gonna install these now. Before I do though, I wanna check fit them. Just to make sure they fit. Yep, they're good in there. Perfect. And I'm actually going to use a little bit of blue lock that. Okay, so I'm actually going to use, reuse the washers that were installed before. I'm not really sure if I should or not, but I am because I prefer it. Make me feel safer. Okay, so these will be torqued at 50 newton meters. Again, these are 14 millimeters. Let's just go in a crisscross pattern with these. Go slow first, don't over torque them yet. Just make sure they all go plus. Torqued. 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 So 
now let's go one more time for all because I don't think this is torqued. There it is, now it's torqued. Okay, that's all our feet. So we're good to go with this. All right, sprocket is ready. Okay, so take this opportunity to use some uh, grease, some silicone based uh, grease. I use uh, this uh, silk light, just dab a bit and just go all over here. All right, now to remove the, uh, the sifter, don't forget to mark it. I already did mark it so you put it in the exact same position. Also, the ratchet doesn't clear, it doesn't fit because it's hitting on the plastic here. Even if I use and extend it, it hits the chain guard and I can actually put the ratchet in. But it actually does not require that much torque, so you can actually use a key and that uh, will be fine. I actually, I could not find the torque specs for this. If someone knows it, you can let me know. But honestly, I don't really care what the torque specs are because I'm just gonna go as snug as possible because these things are notorious for slipping off. So we're just gonna remove it for now. That was as simple as that. It's really, really light. Okay, you're gonna need a eight millimeter remove one two three and you're probably gonna need an extension too for it to go one inside there one. <clears throat> so by the way you should be removing this wire over here there you go so that's up there screws are out. Let's remove this. Alright. And this is exactly why I wanted to remove it, even though I'm not sending the front sprocket. <laughs> if you can see over here, it's full of grease. This is the OEM grease that they use when you first get the bike. Forget to use the the washer. Not in place. For now, we're just gonna use the original position of the wheel until we install the chain, and then from there we're gonna see whether we have to adjust the wheel position based on the length of the chain. Okay, once you put the wheel in and tighten this, just hand tighten this, make sure that the wheel goes as 
smoothly around as you can check it before you install the chain before you do anything just make sure it's fine and also at the same time test the brake Have the master link that we're going to use for the new chain and the new chain. So for the new chain we went with uh, 112 links. Uh, stock chain is 110 links. The reason we needed two more links is because now we went higher in size so we're going to use the two extra links to remain at the same uh, wheelbase distance. So let's try and whip this Okay, it looks like the distance is almost there. Gonna have to bring the wheelbase a little closer, just a little bit. It's almost close, so we can add the link, the master link, but it's not close enough. Okay, so now we need to bring the wheel closer in size, so we're gonna put this adjuster a little bit further in so we can bring the wheel in just a little bit we're going to do the same thing from both sides this is actually a 10 millimeter and the other one here is a 12 so you need a 12 there and a 10 here so just bring this a little bit closer in And at the end, you have to make sure that these align. You have to make sure that the lines are the same here, but they are on the other side. Bring this closer. I think this, this is my point. Yeah, we'll get here. I'm gonna use this distance just to uh, connect the master link first. With the master link let's connect the master link okay now to connect the master link what you need to do is okay we're at a good distance here so before you put in the master link first you're going to start with two o-rings but before you put the two o-rings the two rubber o-rings you're going to insert some lube here Okay, put a lot of lube in this one. The more the better. I have some on top of it. There, there, here. And then insert it. There you go. This link here, you'll see it says 520BX3. So I'll put that as so outside. The other side, it says nothing. So that's what you're gonna put over there. Okay, so now we're gonna use our chain tool to press this in. And I'm gonna tell you how to actually press this in 
and how to measure it to make sure you don't overpress it because if you overpress it then the whole master link will be ruined you have to remove it and get a new one all right So now that we pressed the master link in and the rivets are out, now we need to flare the rivets. To do that, we need about 0.5 to 0.7 um, of a millimeter flare. That's literally less than a millimeter. That's very, very tiny. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the rivet and we are at five millimeters, 0.17, which means we have to flare this at around 5.67, around 5.67 or 5.87 or 5.9 roughly. So we're gonna start with the goal of just 0.5 first. Let's see where it's gonna take us. All right guys, installation is done. This thing looks beautiful. Love the new gold chain with new gold nuts, titanium. It looks awesome with the new sprocket. Now all that's left is to take it out for a ride and go uh, compare the before and after, see what results we're gonna get. So let's hit it.